Okay, welcome to Travel and Tips Part 3. Welcome, Jamie, to the show. Cheers, guys. Again. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> a travel specialist. <laughs> yeah. To the show. Well, yeah. I haven't travelled much recently, but, you know, I did a bit before. So in this kind of segment, we're going to be talking about, like, the essentials that you need for travelling, um, as well as you know, getting Jamie's thoughts on, you know, uh, stuff that he took you know whether it was the right things to take or not etc and uh, the pros and cons to that etc so um yeah luke do you want to kick off yeah should sure. just give you a basic yeah just basic idea of um you know what what tips you've got like, um you know like before you go on the trips and stuff obviously you'll probably do a little bit of research and stuff yeah well um yeah because depending on what you're doing travel wise what you need to take will be very different um there is one thing that everybody will find incredibly useful. The number one thing you always need, even when you're planning, is your phone. <laughs> um, it's, you know, there's so much on mobile phones nowadays. Um, you know, if you need a camera, you've got a camera. If you need to access the internet, you've got the internet. If you want to find somewhere cool to go and eat, something fun to do, you know, just research where you're going to go next, book hotels, book car hire. you got your phone. And... Yeah it's all just there like you could literally be and i've been it's like i've been on a bus overnight from one place to another and thinking what am i going to do at this next place um you know, when am i going to get there all this sort of thing and you've just got your phone and you can research it um so yeah like if you're planning to go anywhere the big thing you mentioned Luke, about you know doing a bit of planning always plan a lot of people get this romantic idea when they're backpacking especially of you don't really need to you just rock up somewhere and things just happen and i guarantee that it always goes wrong at <laughs> some point but it's not traveling something always going to go wrong like <laughs> you can't really deny it but if someone gets stuck in a bad situation 99 percent of the time it's their own fault for getting themselves in there for not having planned properly you know for going and thinking oh i'm going to stay somewhere really really cheap and it turns out to be in a really really rough area or they've just gone, I'm going to get the first place available and they spend loads of money, which they didn't need to do. Um, everywhere's got something a bit different about it. You know, Las Vegas is seen as this kind of really cool place to go and it is, and it is expensive. But if you go during the week, it's like half the price, even less than that, because nobody goes during the week. So you've got to do your research beforehand. Um, always, always do your research. And the key thing you need for that is, the internet <laughs> your phone's got the internet uh, actually on the back of that i'd also say double check before you go traveling what your mobile data plan is um so i'm with three which means that i get my data working absolutely fine for up to about three months in like 100 countries or something and sean and i've been in situations where in america in particular before a lot of companies started doing this you had to go and find wi-fi to get on the internet yeah oh yeah and you'd see people just like huddled around like <laughs> the table in McDonald's or starbucks all around like a charging port trying to get their phones charged and just contact home and things like that so if you've got the ability to use your data normally it'll get you out of so many situations especially in countries where wi-fi isn't as readily available as it could be in the uk or i mean america it's everywhere but australia it's not in fact, yeah. most people just turn it off because it's Australia's the company that invented Wi-Fi and it is awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. So, yeah, yeah, it's always good to have that. And even if you're doing like, you know, stopovers in other countries, it's good to just double check because the last thing you want, as I had recently when I was in the Bahamas, is to turn your phone on, your data roaming's on, and you've suddenly spent 50 quid yeah. from yeah. turning your phone on. Like right. no, nobody wants that. Um, <laughs> that's happened to me before. Didn't Same do my research. Mistake, yeah. Didn't yeah. do my research. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, um, that's on in between us. You remember when they got to Australia on the film, yeah. and he's like, "What? I didn't even move." <laughs> yeah, like, it cost him like fifty quid, doesn't it? It's yeah. mad. And like, so I know people who did manage to just stay up. They were with three as well, and they just used their UK number the whole time they were out there. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I got uh, an Australian SIM card and I was paying not a lot of money. 
I was with Optus and they actually had a plan in place where any data you didn't use rolled over. Yeah. So the first few months I was living there, I was living in a hostel. We had Wi-Fi. I didn't really need to use my data ever. So all of a sudden I backed up like 60 gig of data that I just <laughs> never got through <laughs> because we never needed to use it. Um, yeah, so there's lots of little things like that um, to watch out for. And then because of that, I then had an Australian number for like looking for work and contacting people because even though I could use my data, I couldn't use my phone, like my minutes or anything. So that had to be changed. But with like WhatsApp nowadays, actually I could have mm. the new SIM card in my phone, but WhatsApp still tied to my old number. So actually everyone back home could just text me out of the blue. Um, like I mean, Sean and I spoke a couple of times just on my UK number, despite <laughs> the fact that the SIM card was in, oh, actually, is it, yeah, it's actually next to me. Just saying to anybody out there, WhatsApp is one of the, um, is one of the in best my, out. Yeah, no, no, sorry. Just, in my pack. Go on, Jamie, carry on. Yeah, as you say, like, I've got this little pack here of um, how to take apart so that's that's my yeah. Aussie SIM card in there. Um, huh. And yeah, it was just sat in my bag, but I could still contact people. So, hmm. yeah. no, I was just going to say real quick WhatsApp is one of the best apps to use when you're out there. Yeah. Just to anyone out there that wants to go traveling or whatever, WhatsApp, download it. Brilliant. Yeah, text messages, calls, video calls, everything's down. Um, most people have it nowadays. So, yeah, I recommend that. Like back in the day, it used to be like trying to use Skype or you'd be trying to use Facebook. And then WhatsApp came along and just smashed it. Absolutely yeah. smashed it. That's good. Um, so, you've done your recent stuff. So, I mean, is there anything, uh, well, based on Australia, so anything that you'd definitely recommend you take? You know, when you're like traveling, like backpacking yeah. type stuff. Yeah, I mean, if we're focusing on Australia, when it comes to like the research thing, um, backpackers in particular, there's a website I've used quite a lot called thebrokebackpacker.com. Um, I literally just popped in the city and it would give you a list of places to stay, things to do, what's nearby, even like for the East Coast entire tours up and down, what you'd be stopping off and seeing so you could plan it. Um, so combining that and hostel world, that sorts out where you're going to stay. When it comes to packing, uh, obviously phone, number one, always need your phone. Um, you're going to need clothes. Sean doesn't, but everyone else does. Yeah, well, it kind of brings <laughs> into itself an interesting topic because you think, well, <laughs> if you're going for a short trip, you just take the clothes you're going to need. Um, if you're going for up to a week, you just take a week's worth of clothes, job done. Yeah. If you're on a two-week holiday, you get into that weird situation where it's like, well, do I take enough clothes for two weeks or do I take them for one week and try and find somewhere to wash them? Yeah. If you're out yeah. backpacking, you're washing your own clothes. <laughs> you know, I would just pack a week's worth of clothes effectively. Um, obviously, Australia got those beaches. You take extra swim shorts, um, you know, a pair of flip-flops or thongs, as they'll call them out there because they just live in them, or they just walk around yeah. barefoot. I don't really care. Um <laughs> Yeah, like a weird one actually is shoes. I don't know if you found this short when we were in America. Um, I take one pair of trainers with me. I'll just buy a second at Walmart. Yeah, because, yeah, time, especially, yeah, I, I, I agree. Buy clothes when you're out there. Um, you know, and, I've got some of my favorite shirts from charity shops. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine, yeah. Sean, a guy called Milky, I think at one point his entire suitcase was stuff out of charity shops. So he didn't need to take much with him. Obviously, underwear and socks very important. Um, you yes. don't want to buy that at the charity shop secondhand. <laughs> but anyway, you go, you can get some really good cheap stuff. And then if you're coming back, you can either bring it with you. I've got loads of stuff that I've bought around the world. Or you can, if it was really cheap from like you know a Walmart, a Kmart, something like that, you can just leave it behind or donate it to charity. Yeah, um, which is always good. So other things I'd recommend taking, no matter what trip I'm doing, I've got microfiber towel. So it will roll up to about that sort of size. It's there we go. There's a camera. Um, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. Um, so it takes up very little space. Like you really are pushed for space with however you want to travel. Yeah. Um, like I've done trips out to Europe for two or three days. My mate and I found some great bags, but again, like you, you've got a backpack and you're just trying to pack into that. You want hand luggage because we're flying Ryanair, we're flying EasyJet. We're not paying for the extra luggage. <laughs> when you go further around the world, you get a bigger backpack, which will have to go in the hold, but you don't want to be carrying around too much. Like you don't want to get to the middle of nowhere and you've not done your research and you're in a hostel miles away from the bus station 
and you've got two massive suitcases and a backpack with stuff that honestly you're not going to need um so yeah those sorts of things that's really important um you know you've got your phone you don't know if you're going to find charging ports no different countries will be very different so a portable charger is really useful definitely yeah. get one of those yes um, or two yeah one or two of those yeah yeah like my, my phone's pretty old now it's the original iphone se it just it won't last a day anymore it really <laughs> won't. it's uh it's a good phone but the battery is not what it used to be so that's something i'd really recommend you take um you know camera if you want to take a camera by all means do you get some amazing shots i've got actually didn't take a camera when i went to australia i ended up getting one out there um i found a company did rentals i did a bit of work with the camera um in fact i shot a wedding like the week after i got it yeah and then i kind of kept it and i was still paying like rental fees but it went towards the cost of the camera and the time i left i thought actually i've got the camera um, i think i had a lens and there was one other bit that i bought which i've forgotten what it is now i've got it somewhere <laughs> um mm -hmm. i just thought actually i really want these like, i really like them. i've enjoyed using them and i can fit them in my bag to get home so i bought them yeah and brought it back with me yeah um, a really weird thing to talk about. Um, actually, I'll get into that next. Talk about towels and stuff. Toiletries um, can be quite an interesting one. If you're doing a longer trip, yeah, take your own stuff out with you. Because you're going to be out there for a long time. You might as well just grab your own things. Um, big bottles and stuff and just make it go as far as you can before yeah. you have to buy anything new. If you're out somewhere for a few weeks, you can get away with you know, just a bottle of shampoo. Maybe a month. I don't know how much shampoo you get through. Um, but a lot, a lot of fish on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mate, your hair's longer than mine right now. No, mate. No, yeah, it's not, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those sorts of things are really good. Um, you know, if you've got like electric shave or electric toothbrush, you're going to have to think about when well, you take the chargers with you, then you're going to need um, adapters. Um, I've actually got a single adapter that will do everything. You can plug in UK, Aussie, US, European, like everything into one side and it'll come out whatever you want on the other side um with a couple of usb ports so they're really really handy to get if you can get like a one that will do everything or take you around the world um because it's interesting to see which countries do things differently yeah, yeah. um so definitely get one of those if you're going to have anything electronic you're gonna have to take charges with you a lot of stuff is now switching usb so that's really good but in case it doesn't you're gonna need to take something to mm. deal with that for like shorter trips when i'm just going away for a few days in europe um back when we were allowed to do that easily <laughs> um i wouldn't even take toiletries um or i'd get well, really small travel ones because they would be under the limits yeah um i did have a friend of mine who went to milan he thought he'd take a bit of cologne with him and it was a nice big bottle of um oh, what did he have something whatever he had and he paid 35 quid for it and we got to cut to security in it to get rid of it. Yeah, it's so, yeah, 10, mil, yeah. 10 mil or something, isn't it? It's true palm, true palm, and he had a big one, and he had to get rid mm. of it. And then he had to go and buy one at customs, and I'm like, well, no, don't buy it at customs, because you have to then, or duty-free, so you have to then get rid of it on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to deal with any of that. Um, obviously, that can be a bit of a pain, anything to put in your hand luggage nowadays. Uh, so yeah, just get the big stuff and keep that with you. Yeah um one of the best things i've ever had for traveling which i didn't get till i was in australia and it was only because i was there and i just kind of had this weird idea because i was bored i was working in a factory all the time life didn't get very different for a few weeks and i bought a nintendo switch mm. and honestly it changed my life <laughs> <laughs> So I was in the hostel for a few months and we've got like the docking systems. We plugged it into the TV and like, over Christmas stuff, like the landlords come in one day. There's myself, this German guy and a Canadian just in our swim shorts. We've got the fans on us because it's 42 degrees outside. We're drinking yeah. a few beers, playing Mario Kart. And he just looks at us and goes, this is why I open a hostel <laughs> for yeah. stuff like this. <laughs> um, but the Switch is handheld as well. Yeah. So actually I've got an entire little case and I can just go around with it. And like if I'm on a bus, I'm on a plane, you know just in a new hostel with not new people and um, when i was in brisbane one of the first nights i was there we didn't go out we just sat on one of the balconies in the room because we got two for some reason we were special <laughs> um, and we just sat and had a few beers and played fifa and mario kart um, <laughs> a few of us, and it was great 
So something like that is amazing. Also, because wherever you buy the games in the world, whenever you're traveling, they will work in any Switch. Mm. So it's not like, you know, when we had the old DVDs and if you like get a really cheap one from America, it wouldn't work in your European player and yeah. things like that. And mm -hmm. I think some consoles still have that. The Switch doesn't. So, you know, why not? And it packs up really, really small. So that's another thing I would definitely recommend. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's really good. Yeah, then just kind of looking at where you're going, obviously, is a key one. You know, if you're going to go to Australia during their summer, don't take a ski jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it takes up far too much space. Um, learn how to roll your clothes as well. That's a really big one. I find if you roll your clothes, it saves up so much. It's all about saving space. Like yeah. If you can play Tetris, you're sorted. If you're <laughs> rubbish at Tetris, get good. You have to find ways to put as much as you can into a small area and remember where it goes because if you don't pack your bag correctly and it's completely full, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, if you're not getting on a plane, you can just have things hanging off the sides. Um, I used to, but I get my sleeping bag. That's another good one to take in a lot of places just in case. But if you get one that rolls up really small, I'll just have it hanging on the outside of my bag. No one's going to keep sleeping yeah. bag, but you know, that just gets you a bit of extra space of, you know, often when I've got my dirty clothes in like laundry bag, they don't get rolled up quite as much. So it's good to have something on the outside that you don't have that space that you can just leave it and then wash yeah. them and sort them out afterwards. Yeah. Um, so just one thing that I thought we could touch on is that what yeah. do you like to do for food? Like, what was it yeah, like no, for food and stuff? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good question actually um so if in terms of like my australian journey it really did depend on what i was doing because obviously there were times where i was living in one place for a long time so it would be all about going out buying your own food from supermarkets actually one of my favorite things to do because i had a lot of time early in the day when i was in bairnsdale because i worked in the afternoons yeah i'd have a shopping list of what i wanted and i'd work out how to eat pretty cheap and we had three supermarkets in town. So we had Woolies, which is Woolworths, because that's yeah. a thing no out there. Um, supermarket. Yeah, yeah, it's mud out there, yeah. Um, so you got Woolies, we had <laughs> Coles, and we had Aldi. Yeah, that was like Aldi's getting around, doesn't it? All the time. I just work out which was the cheapest to get stuff yeah. from. Yeah. And it wasn't always Aldi. <laughs> um, but then like, we had this fresh food market nearby as well. So I could get some like, really nice meats if I wanted to, to have a barbecue. So a lot of that was spent cooking yeah. because, you know, you're there for a long time. You don't want to spend loads of money. Eating out all the time can get really, really expensive, mm. um, especially somewhere like Australia. Like before, you know, like you can get some stuff really, really cheap. Like I was buying four burgers from the fresh food market for like a dollar fifty, yeah. which is great. And you just get the buns and stuff. And I was getting a bag of pasta from the supermarket for 65 cents. So that's like... 30 or 40 p um, yeah. for a 500 gram bag of pasta but then if i went out so one of my favorite pubs had a chicken palmy night on a wednesday and i mean Luke, you must have had a chicken palmy when you were out in australia i don't think i did to be fair i don't think i did so it's big old breaded chicken fillet with <laughs> ham and tomato sauce and cheese hmm. and it's awesome and oh, this wait, time wait, I <laughs> they did like variations they had like the, the mexican one with like salsa and um peppers on it or there'd be like a barbecue one and i think they'd like to see this this whole menu for this one night mm. but for that you're spending about 20 bucks cool. so you know it can get very expensive doing it that way so a lot of people in hostels will be going cheap they'll be buying from the supermarket i live with a couple of guys who lived on pasta and cheese and nothing else and we were on thirty dollars an hour working like five days a week, and they just ate pasta and cheese. Oh, um, so you've got that. Now, if I was somewhere for a couple of days, I wasn't going to mess around with buying food because like, I didn't want to take any food with me when I was like doing these long journeys. So up and down the east coast, I often ate out, and it can get expensive. Um, Domino's will do you a large pizza out in Australia for five dollars. <laughs> so that's always that's good. Brilliant. Um, and then the other way that I'd often get food is going back to what we said initially about research. Yeah. So I would find all the best ideas for hostels and I would look at specials they were doing during the week because some will be doing free food. 
Um, there was a place I stayed, it was the YHA in Darwin, and they just had free dinner every single night, which was just after happy hour as well. So mm -hmm. you'd have a few drinks, have some free food, and then just stay there for the rest of the night. Yeah. Um, other places will do free breakfasts, and if they do that, I'm usually going to go to them. Yeah. Because why not? Like, it's a free breakfast. It can be pretty basic. Um, I've stayed in motels in the United States where it's literally like toast. That's your breakfast. Hmm. Well, it's free. It's something. Yeah. You can normally stock up for the rest of the day. So what um, myself and a friend of mine did when we lived in Melbourne, we were staying in this hostel that did a free pancake breakfast every day. All you had to do was make it yourself. Yeah. So That's you get that. You had like these big bags, uh, jugs of batter, and you just make your pancakes. You had all the sauces, then they had a station for making toasts and things like that. It wasn't any like pastries, it was just basically toast. Maybe some muffins, I think. But that was really good to stock up for the day. Yeah. So if you're really budgeting, you can stretch that as far as you can take it. Um, that's another really good thing to do. But yeah, most of those hostels will have a kitchen of some sort. So you can always do some cooking. You make friends with someone who likes to cook. They'll often end up giving you a bit of food if they've cooked too much or mm -hmm. something like that. But I'm always, yeah, always looking out for the free food wherever you can get it. Walk around the towns that you're in. You know, do your research again. Look at some of the bars. They might have a deal on for a certain night. Um, get all the apps from all the fast food places. I was again living in Melbourne and underneath our hostel was Hungry Jack's which is basically Burger King yeah, yeah yeah and they had on their app this spinner that would give you deals on food so you just hit the spinner and it comes up and you say oh I can get a burger for two dollars so I'll spin it again get two spins a day and goes oh free drink great mm -hmm. I'll go and get a free like coke or something so yeah, yeah. wait where's this place make... I need to go here. <laughs> Burger King. Or he's like, you know, do you want to get free fries? I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I'm getting out of bed now. <laughs> I have a reason to <laughs> do something. Um, yeah, so that was kind of the main ones. It's either eat out, you know, you find a hostel that will do food. In fact, hostels, if they did have a kitchen, it would be generally cheaper than most other places. Or, yeah, you head to the shops and cook it yourself. If you've got yeah. the time, you know, go and find local markets because you get some really, really good stuff. Like I really appreciated having that fresh food market at the butchers because the food quality was really, really good. And it was really, really cheap because they literally, you know, cut it all up out the back. Yeah. 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 We, we went to um, uh, like a like a market and stuff like that. And it was mad, like all the fresh like fruit and veg and stuff like that, like all the fresh fish and like. Yeah. stuff like that like it was really nice yeah really good and so much cheaper to, uh, compared to supermarkets as well like, we it's can so believe how much, much cheaper nicer. yeah yeah so so much cheaper and so much that fresher as well it was mad um and then i was just gonna ask about like money and stuff like how did you like deal with the money like situation did you have a card and you just get money out when you needed it or did you have cash on you or I yeah don't know. so it's always good to have cash always like wherever you are cash will be able to get you out of some sort of situation um you know, I've had the like travel charge cards in the past. Yeah. So you can just load it up with a certain currency. And if you go into a single country, that's also brilliant. Um, if you can remember the pin number, like someone like America is usually a little bit behind the times on what they do. It's like the first time I went out, they, we had chip and pin. They didn't, they were still swiping. <laughs> and you had to sign for it. And then eventually once we got onto contact list, they had just about started doing chip and pin. I see if you can't believe it, can you? America. <laughs> um, then in Australia, I had my own bank account, so I had a bank card which all my money went on to. And yeah, I could use it ATM, but I didn't. So they yeah. don't need cash for most places. But it's always good to have that reserve just in case. Um, I know that my, my cricket club used to do cash only on the bar. Um, so that's always, always useful, like, especially if you're in America, because tipping such a big thing out there. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's always good to have the cash to do that um but yeah so it's either you know go for the cash but then again also if you're carrying cash you've got to look out for pickpockets sometimes you know a lot of places in the world are not entirely safe the way that you view the everyday world around you is not how it will be in different countries sometimes yeah. it's better sometimes it's worse i've seen you go to barcelona barcelona is an amazing city massive pickpocket problem so you don't want to be flashing your cash around those sorts of things. 
Um, a lot of people suggest money belts to actually keep your money underneath your shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, obviously, if you've got cash, you want to keep it separate. You want to keep all of it together in one go. Like I will yeah. always have um, like a little pouch in my main bag. And actually, I have padlocks for my main bag all the time. Even though in a hostel, you can then padlock it again. I'll get like the TSA one. So if you're at the airport and they want to open your bag and have a look, they've got a key to get in. But no one else can get into your bag. So I've got my passport in there. That's where I kept my SIM card, any travel documents, and most of my cash. I'll just take out what I need for the day. And it can be a really good way to budget. Yeah. And until you find something really cold and spend all your money. (laughs) (laughs) um, Yeah, before I went out to Australia, um, I actually got a credit card with Barclays. And the one that I got actually was doing a really good deal where you wouldn't pay any interest on foreign travel money that you spent and also you got a really good exchange rate for two years i think it was i need to check yeah. it's probably expired by now so when i was in hong kong i ran out of cash effectively so i just had to use my credit card which was fine because i was at disneyland at the time <laughs> yeah, all good. Um, but then yeah as you leave a country if you've got cash the other thing that's really important then is when you try to change up a travel exchange they won't take coins okay they will only take notes off you. Like no matter where you've been, they will only take notes back. So you need to be very careful, especially in America where they add tax on at the end, you end up with, I've got bags of change and you can't do anything with them. So if you've got that and you're at the airport and they've got a little dispenser saying, they donate your coins to charity, chuck them all in because you're never going to need them again. And so that's something that you need to keep an eye on. And, you know, if you've got, multiple cards obviously try and keep them separate as well you know not going to say that if you go traveling you're going to get mugged like i've never been in that sort of situation but you don't want to be in that situation and get yourself into trouble yeah basically um and then is there anything that you wish you could have took on your travels that you know now that you that you didn't take um it's a good question really i think more alcohol no, because you don't want to in your bag, do you? <laughs> also, you want to try the local stuff. Oh, yeah, you know, sure. I don't know that yet. Um, that must be I'll go like, what's the local beer? I'm going to try this. <laughs> yeah, like, I think over the years of working at camp, um, Sean and I discovered we were often given a pack of what you should take, which was normally about half a bag of socks, which we thought was a joke until you got there and no, you got through socks like no tomorrow if they just went missing. Mm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think the if there was anything I didn't have, I usually picked it up later on. Yeah. Um, if I've been on these longer trips. Uh, a deck of cards is quite a good one. Um, my friends and I picked them up in Germany. And then I went traveling somewhere else and thought it'd be really good to get my deck of cards out and realized I had a different bag and didn't have them with me. Uh, I think that was before having the Nintendo Switch. That's a really good way to meet people. Yeah, um, yeah. most people can play cards we can teach other char- card games um one of my last nights in sydney we were meant to go out and we got stuck with the lockout laws so we just sat in a hotel room and drank beer and played cards yeah um you know as long as you've got something to keep you occupied that's really really good um as long as you've got your basics to keep yourself alive like you just want to stay you know safe clothed fed and enjoying yourself because if you're not enjoying yourself why are you even well, what's the point type thing isn't it? yeah um yeah i agree yeah so anything that i've forgotten that i need i'll often try and get out there or i fixed it another time and forgot that i made that mistake in the first place because <laughs> i tried yeah. to blot it out <laughs> probably <laughs> um, what about yeah, you sean yeah what about what about you sean when you went uh, traveling and stuff is there anything that you wish you'd talk uh maybe not what i took maybe in terms of overpacking i think i think that's my 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 biggest problem is whenever i go to camp bearing in mind of the years of experience i've had i tend to overpack things not thinking about leaving the space for maybe bringing things back and that new things back sometimes i overdo it by taking too much stuff and it's just there's no need uh to overpack that's that's the main thing that's my problem uh so i'm gonna next time i go traveling uh, hopefully this year 
I'm going to uh, yeah get myself more organized and you know just take the absolute essentials, what you really realistically need, and str str um, strategize it to how long I'm going for. Yeah. So, yeah, my main problem is overpacking. <laughs> yeah. Sure That's why right. every time I go to the airport, I end up having to pay more. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, you can pay extra, but you will pay more if your bag's too heavy. Um, if you want to take a second bag, that's actually something to think about. If you've been away a long time and you're coming home, like if you've got stuff you want to bring back, how do you bring it back? So when I was in Oz, I started playing cricket and I borrowed a load of kit from the club, got myself my own box because you don't want to share that with anyone. And they didn't have any helmets. So I thought, well, I need a, I need a helmet for back home. So I actually bought one out there and then... Mm -hmm sent it by post yeah and at that point i put the dock for the nintendo switch because i didn't need that anymore like i was to plug into a tv and i thought i'm going to be on the road for a while I'm going to be in hostels I'm not going to need to plug in the big screen it's got a screen on it and i've got a stand so i sent that back i sent a few bits of clothing back on your wouldn't need like trousers hmm. because i didn't need long like you know long trousers anymore because i was going to be out in the desert for a while and yeah i just sent it all back by post so i think it cost me Sixty dollars took about three months to arrive because I went by the like, <laughs> cheapest method. But I was away for that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got home yeah. to surprise family, and I beat my package back. Yeah. So I've been in Canberra for a week and a half. I've done a look. I've gone to Sydney. I've gone to the centre. I've done all the way through like Uluru down to Adelaide. Bit of time down there in Kangaroo Island, Great Ocean Road. Like a month in Melbourne, then flew home via Hong Kong and still beat all my stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something but then when i came back the second time i came back fully um i obviously had this camera stuff and part of it was a bag it was a really really good bag by peak design and i couldn't really afford it because they're really expensive so i thought i need to bring extra stuff back so what i actually found was one of the, like, the little wheelie bags that you can take as hand luggage on a plane and because of the backpack that I have, it actually has a day pack that you can attach to it, which was normally my hand luggage. So I zip them together. So they're now one item. Really? And then I've got really? this little wheelie storage, which I checked because I did my research again, always do your research, would fit within the hand luggage guidelines for Qatar Airways and put extra stuff in there. And suddenly I had loads of extra room. So I've gone from a satchel bag to like a mini suitcase as my hand luggage. Yeah, that's really good. Really. And I brought a few extra bits back, or just didn't. No, actually, I think I just didn't roll up my dirty laundry. <laughs> <laughs> but it cost me like ten dollars. I didn't yeah. pay any extra on having to get that extra baggage on the way back, which is going to cost you, you know, like thirty, forty pounds, no matter where you go. And if you're taking that out with you, you're paying that both ways. Yeah. And then you know, if you're on your own. Do you want to get off a bus in the middle of the night, middle of nowhere, with two massive suitcases? No, you don't. No. no. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so oh. just to say, I was just going to say, that is one thing very important to touch upon. When you're booking your flight to wherever you're going, make sure you check um, how much it's going to cost for you for your baggage and how much it's going to cost for you to, to put more back, to have more baggage. Make sure you check that before you fully book the flight. And if you need to get extra baggage, you're probably better off just buying it there and then online <laughs> than maybe when you get to the airport where it might cost more always, money. So always. always take that into consideration when you're buying your uh, your flight. Very important. Yeah. When you're looking at flight prices as well, you might go, oh, this airline's really, really cheap. But what you don't realise is the slightly more expensive one includes baggage or their baggage is a little bit extra. And the really cheap one, I'm looking at like in America, they're talking about Spirit in europe it's going to be ryanair yeah. it can be really expensive for any of those add-ons like ryanair like if you want to sit with your mates you're going to pay extra like 15 20 quid yeah, yeah. No, so i don't want to sit with my mates i'm going to be with them for the next few days so <laughs> <just break. laughs> finding those ways to save money and even you know just those little extra bits in the long run can add up if you go i'm not going to get two bags i'm going to take one bag can give you a lot more freedom to move around and you know getting into taxis and things when you've just got your stuff and you know and you've got a bit extra money for you know a couple of beers or a nicer meal or something like that yeah it's always good yeah. actually talking about things we didn't take i have remembered one now funny story um so at camp i was kind of known for this indiana jones hat 
that I wore. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, like, people just knew me for it because I wore it all the time. It was really useful. It's like, you know, wide brim hat. It's all really good. Um, got it from Disney World, funnily enough. <laughs> and then I think it was my fourth year, first year's, like, the head staff. And I always stayed at my dad's partner's house the night before flying because she's around the corner from Heathrow. And I had all my stuff and I left the hat in the bedroom. Oh. And I realized when I got to the airport and it was like, well, this is Heathrow, the traffic's going to be bad. There's no way I can get my hat back before I fly. So I went without the hat. Oh, okay. And it was the parents of one of my old campers. It was his dad who came up to me on visiting day. Like, I'm looking for this guy. He used to like, look after my son. Um, wears a really cool hat. Don't know where he is anymore. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Cheer, cheers, Adam. Like, <laughs> 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 Uh, I saw them after camp stuff and you just kept ribbing me for not having this hat. Oh. So I bought a new one. So I went to Disneyland that summer. Um, I bought a new one. Next time I came back and he's like, oh, you're back again. <laughs> um, so yeah, Andy <laughs> Perry, thank you very much. It was brilliant. But yeah, I just remember that. That was uh, the one thing I really regretted not taking with me. <laughs> but I did have it. I just left it in the room. <laughs> Don't leave things behind. But when you try, don't even buy it because if you fly out of somewhere like and you've left your jacket somewhere, your hat, it's in a different country. Yeah, you ain't uh, getting it. <laughs> you're not getting it back. You're probably not going to get it back. No. No. <laughs> I think that's a good way to finish. So the one thing that we recommend to take is the Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, thanks, Jamie. Thanks for coming on again, mate. Been really no good um, as always. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. You know, please like, subscribe. Hit that notification button and then Sean, do you want to finish? Yeah, yep, Jamie. Yeah, thank you very much yet again uh, for joining right. us. Um, everyone, uh, make sure you tune in. Um, check on our cast box page, our Facebook page, and our Instagram page for um, Let's Talk with Sean and Luke. And thank you very much for joining. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.